Hi, and uh, thanks for attending. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Stephen Little, and uh, I am the coordinator of uh, the uh, Applied Behavior Analysis Specialization. Uh, here at Walden. I, before I get started, I also want to uh, give some credit to some other people. Uh, we were originally going to share the presenting uh, responsibilities, but uh, we thought it would be more efficient if I did it, but I want to thank uh, Dr. Angelique Aikenlittle and uh, Dr. Jesse Santana for also being involved in the uh, the, the process of, uh, of preparing this. So uh, you can switch to the next slide. Uh, the, the first question that comes up, and I think this, a lot of times is some misunderstanding about what applied behavior analysis really is. Uh, and what it is, and, and I emphasize it's a science-based practice. It is firmly based in, in science. And by that, I mean by, by data, by empirical support, uh, not just uh, what people think may work, but what research has suggested over the years as, as, as effective uh, in, in modifying individuals' behavior. So they use learning principles uh, to help individuals, I say, reach their full potential. Uh, and, and I use that, and I'm trying to just change behavior. We want people to um, you know, reach and be all they can be. Uh, and I'm not just taking a line from uh, a, a military uh, recruitment commercial, but we do want everybody to, to reach their full potential. And what ABA practice focuses on is the environment, how the environment influences behavior. Um, we base everything on the assessment information that we get by looking at the individual uh, in their natural environment, how they interact with their environment. Uh, we, we do what we call, we're looking for the function of the behavior. Behaviors that occur multiple times do not just occur by chance. They're, they serve a purpose. They have a function. So we look for the function. And if we can find the function of that behavior, we are better able to make good database decisions on the best way to possibly modify that behavior. And ABA has been used to address the needs of consumers, and I, and I use the word consumers, uh, children, um, adolescents, adults, in multiple areas. Uh, one of the more common ones is special education, but it's also used in general education. Uh, organizational management, a big area, an up and coming area of, of, of behavior, or behavior management in businesses. Um, safety, gerontology, many, many more. But it's probably best known as being the leading evidence-based treatment approach in working with individuals with uh, autism on the autism spectrum and other developmental disabilities. Slide. Now, if you come to Walden, if you go through our program, uh, your goal is most likely to become a board certified behavior analyst. And I'll go through this relatively quickly, but uh, uh, to give you enough so you know what, what I'm talking about. The Behavior Analyst Certification Board is the, the board that um, looks after the credentialing of behavior analysts. And you get a credential called a board certified behavior uh, analyst. And uh, they organize it, they set the standards that our program is based on. Uh, and it's identified within the behavior analysis community. Uh, the government states generally recognize this credential when they have, some states have licensing of behavior analysts. Uh, they recognize the credential as what you need to become licensed in that state. And uh, for consumers of behavior analytic services, be they parents, be they agencies, whoever it is, these are the individuals they want working with uh, their children or with the, uh, the individuals with, for whom they have some sort of supervisory responsibility. Now, the, the Board Certified Behavior Analyst, or BCBA, is a graduate level certification. It's available to individuals at the master's or doctoral level. And the, it is the credential for people 
who provide behavior analytic services, and it allows the practice of behavior analysis uh, as an independent practitioner. You do not have to be supervised by anybody. And in, within psychology, it's one area where you can practice independently at the master's level. Uh, you do not necessarily have to have a doctor to do it. Um, one of the things BCBAs really do more than anything else is supervise the work of board certified assistant behavior analysts, registered behavior technicians, and others who implement uh, behavior uh, analytic services, including working with parents who may be the prime uh, individual working with their own children. Um, so, so what do BCBAs do? Uh, and I'll talk about specific areas where they work later on, but BCBAs more than anything design the programming for individuals who are in need of behavior analytic services. They don't do as much direct one-on-one -on -one work, although some people who really like it do it more, but in most cases, they design the, the interventions. Uh, they do assessments of the, uh, of the individual in their naturalistic environment, and they supervise individuals who actually implement the, the interventions. So it is, it's a higher level of uh, service provision than just providing behavior analytic services. While yes, you may do that, especially if you like doing it, but you also have a more, uh, a broader perspective on what is going on. Um, what do they not do? The one thing that I wanna make clear that behavior analysts do not do is diagnose. Behavior analysts primarily work with individuals on the autism spectrum, but they do not diagnose uh, individuals as being on the autism spectrum. That is left to physicians and psychologists, doctoral level psychologists. Uh, I do that in my practice as a licensed psychologist, um, not as my role as a, just a board certified behavior analyst. So that's what they don't do, but their responsibilities uh, are, are more general and they monitor the progress. They make sure that the programs that are being implemented by say uh, a registered behavior technician are being implemented with what we call integrity. In other words, the way it was designed and consistently, because if it's not, then it's probably not gonna work. So they do that. They, they monitor the work of those individuals who are doing it. They keep track of the behavior and the progress. They make modifications to programs when necessary. So all of that falls under the responsibilities of the, uh, the BCBA. Next. The requirements. Four requirements to become a BCBA. Degree, coursework, practical experience in the BCBA exam. Next. As far as the degree is concerned, you have to have a minimum of a graduate degree. It has to be a master's or a doctoral degree from a qualifying institution. That institution is just one that is you know, recognized by uh, the uh, Higher Learning Commission or one of the regional accrediting, in other words, an accredited university. Um, the degree does not have to be in behavior analysis. Uh, the degree does not have to be in psychology. Right now, you could have a degree in English literature, a master's degree in English literature, if you took the specific B, uh, BACB verified course sequence, which we offer uh, as part of our program, then that's what counts towards the, the BCBA. So the, the degree has to be master's or above, but it doesn't have to specifically be in behavior analysis. Our degree that we offer is an MS psychology with a specialization in applied behavior analysis. Next. The coursework. The coursework, again, coming from an accredited institution, and it has to cover the content required by uh, the BACB's fifth edition task list uh, in their course content allocation documents. Um, and only graduates of the, these courses uh, where you were formerly enrolled at the graduate level 
sometimes an undergraduate may take a graduate course, but they get undergraduate credit. That Even if it's a graduate course, if it doesn't have graduate level credit, it won't count. So it has to be graduate course, you have to pass it. And it's built into what we call the verified course sequence. Our verified course sequence is approved by the Association for Behavior Analysis International, or ABAI, uh, for the fifth edition, which is the current edition. That went into effect starting January 1st of this year. So we meet the, the coursework requirements. Next. Uh, the requirements for the coursework, again, Association for Behavior Analysis International, they, I won't go into the details on what they are, but they are a major uh, organization that uh, accredits program and approves the coursework that, that uh, individual programs are offering. And uh, our program does meet that. And we are at the fifth edition. Um, so I did put on here uh, the a link to uh, their listing of VCS programs. Uh, you'll see us listed as its fourth edition. It will say retired because that's no longer a valid um, level. The fifth edition is, which we are approved at that point. So verified course sequences with other courses that you need. You could technically go someplace else, take similar courses that are not part of a verified course sequence. But let me tell you that when you apply for the BCBA, uh, the paperwork that's required to document those programs is to those courses is very tedious and uh, difficult. So you want to have uh, your courses from a, a BCS approved program. Next. Uh, practical experience, we do not offer the fieldwork experience. Uh, generally speaking, uh, online programs do not offer the fieldwork. You are required to do that uh, on your own. Currently, the requirements are 2,000 hours. You can start accruing those hours the day that you start your first course of the verified course sequence. So when you start that course, uh, you can start getting your experience. And it's 2,000 hours, which is a lot of hours. That's basically a year's work of full-time work. So it, it, it does take a while to accrue those hours. So it's in your best interest to start getting those hours while you are still working on your, your coursework. Uh, next. Um, the BCBA exam, it is given by um, Behavior Anal Analysis Analyst Certification Board, uh, and you can get authorization to take the exam only once you have provided documentation that you've completed your coursework, you have the, the, the uh, an acceptable degree, and you have your fieldwork, uh, your practical experience document. Now, one thing that I think is, is good, we've just started doing this, but we are, have built in exam preparation into all seven of our VCS classes. We use something from a company called Rogue ABA, who developed a test preparation handbook. Um, every course, the, it's based on that fifth edition, what they call a task list, which outlines everything you, you need to know, and they have a, a few pages on every single one. And while you are covering those materials in your courses, you're also looking at the test materials, which you'll then probably want to review when it gets time to take the exam. Next. Our program, and I'll go through this in uh, relatively quickly because I don't, I, I don't have enough time to go through each course in detail, but foundations philosophy of philosophy of behavior analysis. Give you some of the history and the philosophy that, that you know, behavior theory, starting with uh, you know early early theorists all the way up to individuals uh, today. But there's a, a high emphasis on on uh, BF Skinner uh, principles, which go through the basics of behavior analysis, uh, ethical, legal, and professional issues uh, in behavior analysis. Um, 
which I think it pretty much tells you what it is. That's the ethics course, as well as it talks about professional issues in, in the legal regulation of, of what you do. Um, in like 6734 and 6736, they're just all of what you do. We go through everything basically on that task list and in detail so that you all will accumulate those skills and that you'll be also be able to know what you're going to need for the exam. Uh, site 6735 is research methods. One thing I can tell you, our primary research method is single subject design. It does not entail inferential statistics. So you won't have to worry about um, t-tests or ANOVA or correlation or any of that stuff. It's basically graphing data and, and eyeballing it, which you'll get in detail in that course. And then finally, application and special topics and applied behavior analysis with two main foci in there being supervision, because part of what you do as a board certified behavior analyst is supervise others, and then aut autism spectrum disorder, which is the main population with which you'll probably work. Next. Uh, real quickly on the job market, the most, not the most up to date statistics, but the most up to date that I could find. Um, the, there's a lot of jobs out there right now, uh, and it has been growing. So you can see this uh, chart on, on the left-hand side goes from, um, you know, basically a, a recent period, and you can see how every year the jobs increase, increase, increase. I get emails every single day uh, about places that are looking for, for employment. And you can see that the vast majority of places are looking for individuals at the master's level. And usually at the doctoral level, they'll take either a master's or doctoral person. So uh, it includes those. The bachelors and the associates, those individuals are at a lower level. Uh, they're generally looking for a bachelor's level. It's a, a board certified assistant behavior analyst and associates and below, that's a registered behavior technician. Those are the individuals you'd be uh, supervising. Next. Career options. Uh, you'd all become a behavior, an ABA therapist, a BCBA, uh, working with, uh, could be individuals with uh, autism, uh, developmental disabilities, anything in, in that area, but there's a lot more. In this case, you, you could be working in a clinic, and most people work out of some sort of clinic, either providing services and supervising services in the clinic, or going to homes and, and, and doing the same thing in the home. Uh, but you're also eligible for private practice. Now, when you first start out, you're probably not ready for private practice, but eventually you could set up your own company, your own business and, and work that way. Schools, increasingly schools uh, are, uh, are looking for behavior analysts to provide services within the schools. I, I won't go into any general issues in this area because each state has separate sort of criteria for doing that. So you want to check your own state. Adult rehabilitation, uh, a growing area, working with individuals, mostly those that have some sort of, of brain injury in, in working in their rehabilitation. Organizational behavior management. You'd have to have more than just the verified core sequence, but there's a growing field in working in businesses uh, to, to help structure the, the environment for uh, optimal performance by their uh, employees. Uh, consultants, consultants to all different types of areas. Early interventionists, I put that on there primarily to, to focus on the fact that the best way that we can help people is to intervene as early as possible. University instructor, even at the master's level, a lot of programs, there, not, there are not enough uh, doctoral level behavior analysts to, um, to fill the need. So a lot of places uh, are hiring master's level people to teach in, at, at the university level, the graduate level. Clinical director, BCBAs basically run behavior anal analysis clinics. Um, and, it, and last thing I put on here, and I know I'm going kind of fast right now, but insurance care advocates, uh, insurance companies, by having your BCBA, you will be able to build insurance companies. And insurance companies need to have people that look at claims to make sure that claims are valid. So you can even work for, for insurance companies. 
if that's what you like. Um, and of course, if there's job available. So, but all of these and, and much more, but this is gives you an idea of the opportunities that are available to board certified engagement officers. Next. Now, why Walden? First of all, Walden is a leader in distance education and has been for over 50 years. I've been working for Walden now uh, for, oh, uh, 16 years. And uh, it, it, it's a wonderful place to work. I think it's a wonderful place for students to go. Um, we really are student focused. And we don't just say it, we really are. Um, ABA I or ABA I uh, has approved our verified course sequence. So you won't have to justify that you have the proper education. It's there because we have that VCS, that verified course sequence. All of our faculty, and I think we have a great faculty, we all hold a PhD. Uh, and we all have extensive practical experience. Um, my PhD is in school psychology, a uh, very behavior analytic school psychology program. But I have th those type of experience. Dr. Jesse Santana also is a school psychologist, as is Dr. Angelique Aiken Little. Other individuals have uh, their, 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 their doctorates in, in other areas, but the contributing faculty all work pretty much full time as practicing behavior analysts. So you're getting people who know what's going on in the field every day. The university provides tremendous support for this program um, throughout the university. I specifically want to uh, call out Dr. Sharupa Sarkar, who was the MS program director, who was instrumental in getting this program started and getting me moved from the clinical psychology program into uh, into this program and to develop and design the program. Uh, I mentioned it before, but the test preparation, if you're gonna pass that test to become a BCBA, is built into the program. I also think we have great learning modalities. It's not just asynchronous discussions, but it also includes recorded lectures. Now, I have recorded all the lectures. So you get to listen to me for an hour, uh, basically around an hour each week. I go into detail on all the things that are important in that lecture. And it's recorded so that you can do it on your time. We also have podcasts. My wife, uh, Dr. Angela Aiken Little, and I have a number of discussions incorporated into the classes on important topics in ABA. We also interview some major league, uh, leaders in the field of, of behavior analysis uh, from throughout the world, not just a narrow group, uh, but people that really have contributed so much to the field. Uh, and you'll read their research and then you go, wow, I'm actually seeing this person talk. They're a real human being. Uh, and uh, I think you'll find those very interesting. I mentioned the asynchronous distress, discuss, instruction. You don't have to be there at any one specific time. Um, now the class, the courses, each course, does have exams. There's usually four to five exams over the course of the 11 week quarter. Um, I, I did that and I put them in there specifically because I structured the exam to be similar to the exam that you have to take and pass to become a board certified behavior analyst. So it's not just, don't think of it as just something that you have to do, but something that's going to help you prepare to become a behavior analyst. So next. <laughs> Uh, I always lose track of time, and I didn't even look to see what time it was, so uh, <laughs> hopefully I didn't go too long, and I'll be happy to answer any questions if I have any time. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Little. We appreciate you sharing your insights about applications of applied behavior analysis and Walden's uh, program. There is a question in the chat, so if you have um, comments or questions, please feel free to type them in the chat now. Uh, the first question that I see is, it was, I think back from the slide where you were talking about the courses in the program, is this a course that is recommended to be taken separate from other courses or can it be added into the general course load? And Zanita asked that, I'm not sure which course in, in particular um, uh, is, is being referred to here, but if you want to clarify that in the chat, that would be great. Okay, all, all of these courses are part of the verified course sequence. Uh, you need to complete all seven of these courses um, 
to meet the educational requirements uh, of the uh, Behavior Analyst Certification Board. Uh, otherwise, if you didn't have all of them, um, then you're not going to meet all the criteria to become a board certified behavior analyst. Uh, the courses uh, can be taken, you know, there's no specific uh, rules on when you take the courses. Now, we try, we, we incorporate them in the requirements for MS psychology. Um, so you have some requirements that are listed in here that are MS psychology courses, but how you take these courses uh, depends on your, your schedule, but I recommend you take these courses in the sequence, either together with other uh, courses or in, in this order, because they, they do kind of build on one another uh, to a certain extent. I don't know if I completely answered your question, but uh, hopefully I did. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and the comment uh, in response was, I'm currently a PhD psychology and fast tracks student. So I think it might be a push to do it simultaneously, but yes, you answered the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions. And, and actually that, that, that person, they are in the PhD program. They don't need to take the MS courses. Although right now we can only offer our verified course sequence in the context of our overall MS uh, psych program, but you would only really need the seven courses of the verified course. Thank you for clarifying that. Are there other questions? If so, please feel free to type them in the chat. Well, you must have been uh, very thorough because I don't see any more questions coming in. <laughs> well, well, let me just quickly give my uh, my my email address. Um, it's just Stephen S T E V E N dot Little L I T T L E at mail dot Walden U dot E D U. So if, if you think of something later on, you want to ask me a question, feel free to to email me at any time. Thank you for that. And I'll post that in the chat as well. Rachel added a question. How do you suggest a person get their hours since it's not provided by the school? How, how, does, how does Walden help uh, individuals in getting those hours? The, because people are all over the country, um, you know, we, it, it's becomes very difficult for us to, to structure it into the program. But uh, uh, what I can do and what our faculty will do is give you suggestions on, on who to contact in your area. There's, there's no one um, answer to that because uh, you know some areas have a, a great need. And, and frequently what you can do to get the, uh, if you're not already working in a, a, an ABA type of setting is that you can be, you'll be hired. I, I've supervised some individuals separate from my work at Walden, but uh, uh, who are, are doing this, and, and I've done their, su their supervision because uh, I'm a qualified supervisor, and um, uh, they just found me as a qualified supervisor on the list, contacted me, and I actually found the, uh, because they live near me, I found the, the place before them. So that's one way that you can do it, but I'm also happy to assist anybody in providing whatever I can to uh, give you a direction to go in your geographical area. Wonderful, thank you. And once again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. We have a few more um, exciting sessions this afternoon that explore other subdisciplines of psychology. So don't miss out. Um, I posted the link in the chat to the session catalog so that you can join the next session in just a few minutes. There'll be about a 10 minute break period. So um, get up and stretch and, and grab a coffee or water and we'll see you in the next session, which is, so you want to teach in higher education. Um, we hope to see you there or and throughout the rest of the, the rest of the day. Thank you everyone. Yeah, thank you.